Mid-State Pools and Spas knows pools and ground pools to above ground pools. Mid-State Pools and Spas has over 35 years in the industry, building more than 3,000 pools. Now, we build all our own pools, never subcontracting to work out. So if you're ready to build a pool, renovate a pool, or you need weekly maintenance or liner replacement with a full 20-year warranty, call the professionals at Mid-State Pools and Spas. Visit our showroom today at 2273 Veterans Boulevard in Dublin and see the new line of Marquee Spas. For the ultimate in hot tub experiences, choose Marquee Spas. Also see our new selection of casual patio furniture, available now at our showroom, Mid-State Pools and Spas, where we know pools. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Real Talk here on TV35. I'm your host Pat Brock and we've got the Metzdorf with, with us today. We're talking about fathers and Father's Day is coming around the corner mm -hmm. and we want to really show what great fathers we have in this community. We've got Tim with us. Hey Tim, how, how are, are you? How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good to see you. It's good to be here. All right, we've got the valedictorian of Dublin High School with us, Lauren. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. And we've got the young man that has the best man bun in town. <laughs> Dylan, what's going on, Dylan? I'm doing good. How about you? Doing good. You know, this is the most Dylan and I've talked since we've ever met in life. <laughs> we, are, we see one another and then we go, what's up? So. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, listen, we want you, we know that you're a family man, so mm -hmm. we want to want to hear from you. Share with us about your family, all right? Um, well, I had the advantage of having really great parents, yeah. and I think that's where it starts. Um, my mother and father um, have been married, gosh, over 50 years. Is it 53 years now, I think? Mm -hmm. So the precedent was set early on in my life as far as what an example of what a marriage and what a family life should be. Um, and the other added benefit was I came from a big family. I've got three older brothers and two younger sisters. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a wide range of, of uh, life experiences there uh, growing up in that household. Um, my father was a pastor, so we moved. I was actually born in North Georgia in a place mm -hmm. called Tacoa, Georgia. Yeah, where my dad went to uh, Bible college, and then from there we moved to Fort Worth, Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, there my sister joined us. Uh, she was number five, and dad was in seminary in Fort Worth, so I lived about five and a half years in Texas, so a little bit of a different background there, and then when he graduated seminary, he got a call to a church back in Georgia in a little place called Tombsboro, Georgia. Lord Not a lot of people know where Tombsboro <laughs> is, but we moved from Fort Worth, Texas to Tombsboro, Georgia. If you, can, yeah, if, you, if you can imagine, we got out of the car and we were like, really, Dad? Right. Really? Such <laughs> right. right. Um, and then as we, when we lived in Tombsboro, uh, my sister Catherine, number six, she joined us. So again, there's a lot of transition, and through it all, we always learned that, that family is what you lean on. Right. That's your support system. Um, and you know, this, you know, families fight, families have fun, mm -hmm. families, we worship together, we cry together, we pray, pray together, we play sports together. Yeah. Um, so there was always the competition amongst us boys. We weren't allowed to mess with the girls. Right. That was dad's, you know, dad. Right. My father wanted, he, he said he, he told us a story one time that he said he knew when he was eight years old that he was going to grow up, he was going to get married, and he was going to have a little girl, and he was going to name her Pamela Ann Metzdorf because her initials would spell out her first name, Pam, and that's that's the mind <laughs> of an eight. That's the mind of an eight-year-old. Is her name Pam? <laughs> he stuck to it. Oh. But the only problem was he grew up, he got married, and he had four boys first. Oh my <laughs> so, gosh! So it took him a while it for took, his child. It took to it come took to him pass. a while. He finally got his girl, and that was it. The girls were off limits. That was Daddy's girls. They right. were going to sit on his lap and so forth. So we had boundaries. We had expectations growing up, and it was just such a natural process that when I met my wife, Margie. Um, we're high school sweethearts. We just, it was kind of one of those things, the kind of the storybook, we just knew. Yeah. And, and I think even then, I can remember vividly classmates at Dublin High School in the early 90s saying, y'all make such a good couple, We'd, that just makes sense, and that kind of thing. So it was nice that we had, we had everyone's blessing. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so um, from there, you know, it just, blessing. right, right. It, it seemed like it was just a natural thing. We yeah. just kind of fell into it. Um, we started a little young. We've, I've got actually one other child. Shana can't be with her, here with us today. Um, she's she's living her own life and paying her own bills. So nice. check mark. <laughs> right. How old is she? She's 23. 23. Shana's 23. Okay. Um, Lauren just graduated high school. She's 18. Okay. And then 
Uh, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan's 16. He's still got two more years at the high school, so he's getting there. Um, but again, I think the, the template was set early on in my mind mm -hmm. as far as what kind of father I wanted to be, right. what kind of husband I wanted to be. Um, as I mentioned, my dad's a pastor, so mm -hmm. that, that obviously had a, had a very, uh, a very significant thread in my upbringing and obviously the way I, I raised my children. Um, so again, it's kind of, you know, people say all the time, there's no rule book to life. There's no right. rule book to parenting and so forth. But I think I, I had a pretty good outline right. um, going into it. Um, and so, again, not to say that we eluded all the normal struggles of growing up mm -hmm. and, and being a husband and a wife and then early on being uh, young parents. Right. Um, it was kind of interesting. I think it was my either my 10-year or my 15-year high school reunion mm -hmm. Margie and I uh, went to. And, you know, we were catching up with old friends and so forth. And they were like, oh, you guys are so, you, we knew you'd be together and that right. kind of thing. And they're like, so y'all got, got kids? And we're like, mm-hmm. How many kids do you have? Three. You have three kids. And everyone was right. just, you're crazy. You've got yeah. three. Because everyone else was, you know, either just starting their careers right. and so forth. Right. So we were a little ahead of the curve so on that. Path. Yeah, we, we took a different path. But I, right. I told them, I said, ha-ha, joke's on you. I said, when you're trying to get ready to retire, you'll still have kids that you're having to buy a car and send to college. Right. When I get ready to retire, they're going to be gone. That's <laughs> I'm, right. like, I'm, right. I'm going to be looking at them going, um, your mother and I are spending your inheritance. So you guys, <laughs> you guys better make, make sure right. you've got your bases covered. Exactly. And but, uh, speaking of bases covered. There you go. Yeah. All right, Lauren. <laughs> uh, you know, being a softball player, you know, and of course, you know, excelling the way you have. Uh, talk to us about your life and what it's like for you having a dad like this guy to your left. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he's always been, um, you know, the coach. Every, I think every father that has kids that play sports, they kind of have that double role as parent and then coach. Mm -hmm. and, and some kids, you know, they struggle with that, uh, finding, you know, the, the fine line between will you be my dad or will you be my coach. But I don't think we've ever really had that problem. Like, from soccer and softball, I've been in both since I was four years old. Mm -hmm, um, but the biggest part of him in my athletic journey was when I started pitching, yeah. obviously. But that didn't start until middle school. Um, so up until then, it was just, you know, he helped me be the best soccer and softball player in whatever position, whatever I wanted to do, he was going to be there for me. But um, when I started pitching, it really it was like, this is my man right here. It's me and him. We got this. Yeah. You know, all of my games, he was there um, helping me call my pitches and mm -hmm. taking me to all my lessons and all that stuff. And it's just like, I really appreciate you. Yeah. I mean, and that's really special because not everybody has that. Yeah. Not everybody has that. So that's great. And of course, you were valedictorian uh, yes. this year for Dublin High School. I didn't have anything to do with Nothing that. Nothing to do with that. You didn't help her with her homework? <laughs> no. She, we never once, and I say we, we've been blessed with children, we never once said to ask Lauren, have you done your homework? How, how, how are you doing with this? Yeah. Never once. She was that's always just. It was, that was, she just, she fell into it like a duck in water. Great work mm -hmm. ethic. Very yep. competitive. You are. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that helps. That helps mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, let's see about Dylan here now. Dylan, <laughs> did this apple not fall far from the tree with you? No. Share with us. <laughs> Share with us, Dylan. Talk um, to us. I'm almost exactly like him. Because so like, when, when I was growing up, I, I think I went to his job one time. And, uh, yeah came around the corner and there was a lady working the desk and I wasn't, I wasn't around the corner. He was already talking to her. He, he said, hey, do you want to see my little mini me? And I walked around the corner and she said, oh my God, you look just like him. I said, I guess I do. I don't see it, but I guess so. Right. No, the apple did not far, fall from the tree and even uh, Miss Whitlock from Dublin High School. Mm -hmm. yeah. She says I oh act gosh. exactly like him. Yes. Really? And, and you know, coming from Miss Whitlock, that's the truth because oh. she taught Everyone, right. everyone. She taught all my older brothers. She taught all my kids, me, my wife, everyone. So then he came home and told us about it. He goes, "Did did you have a Miss Whitlock?" <laughs> I was like, "Everybody's I had said, everybody had Miss Whitlock." He's like, "Yeah, she knows you." And I was like, "Right." <laughs> and for you, you know, Dylan, to hear that that you're so much like your dad, how does that make you feel as a young man? <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's every little kid's dream. Like, I want to be my like my dad one day. Like, yeah. well, I mean starts out, I want to be like my favorite superhero or whatever. And then, right. well, as a little kid, your dad is your superhero. Right. So when you're growing up, you're like, hey, I want to be just like my dad. And then 
growing up. I'm like, yo, you're so much like your dad. You do everything I can. He's, he certainly, <laughs> I know he certainly has he certainly has a competitive streak in him, mm -hmm. yeah. just like she does. And that's it's been kind of interesting because they basically grew up together. There's only 18 months between mm -hmm. uh, these two. Mm -hmm. But uh, my oldest daughter, Shayna, there's five years. And I think I, Margie and I kind of look back on that and we say it's, it's kind of like the, the tale of two different parentages mm -hmm. because we were so young when we had Shayna. It was right. like, okay, we kind of, it was the, we don't want her to break, right. handle her with kids' gloves and that kind of thing. And then the five years, you know, by the end of the fifth year, we we're just like, this is easy. Oh, yeah. We, we got changes. this. Yeah. And so we had, we had Lauren and uh, my wife, it was, I'll have to give her props. She, she kind of knew. She, uh, she asked me, she said, what do you want to, you want to try for another one? And I said, I said, uh, I said, well, she goes, I know you want a son. <laughs> I said, well, I said, I said, we'll try one more time. I said, the good Lord willing, we have a boy, fine. If if not, I'll just grow up with a house full of women. Yeah, that's fine too. Boom. But but boom, there there, you go. there he is. And you I got said, man bun over there. He's, he's, Look at that. He, he has been he has been a, a mini me from pretty much the word go. Um, and and, it, and like I said, the the two of them growing up together, going through school together, it's been really interesting to see how they've progressed as kids right, and, right. and be it one's a boy, one's a girl. They're both super competitive. Right. But it, so you, you, you want to see that. You want to see them grow up together and not only be brother and sister, but also be friends. Yeah. But at the same time, you realize that, you know, I'm not going to parent Lauren the way that I'm going to parent Dylan. Right. Because they are, they're two separate people. Two separate people. And, and that's always been kind of my, my mantra was I'm raising my kids to think for themselves. That's good. And, and I teach them. You know, obviously, you love your parents. You should trust your parents. Your parents love you. They're not going to try to purposely lead you astray. Right. But, you know, there's information that you and I are working with mm -hmm. that we grew up with yeah. that's outdated. Yeah. You know, yes. I, I can remember, uh, what was it, about 1994, watching the Today Show with Bryant Gumbel. And this is two years after I graduated high school. Right. And they're asking the question on ABC or whatever channel it was on, what is the Internet? I mean, I had already, oh, wow. gra I had already graduated high school two plus years in 1994. And so, we, we, you're right, when, <laughs> when, when, when you put the timestamp yeah, on that, you realize different. that these kids have grown up yeah, in an era. A, whole different, a right. whole different age. We're going to take a commercial break. Okay. Okay. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to continue talking with the Met Store. We're going we're gonna to have them share about family time. We'll be cool. back in just a moment. Dublin Macon Cardiology, celebrating over 14 years of serving Dublin and Lawrence County. At Dublin Macon Cardiology, we're always committed to taking care of you and your heart. Bringing state-of-the-art cardiac care closer to home with a walk-in chest pain center. New patients are always welcome and no referral is ever required. Dr. Vega is proud to announce the addition of Elise Rotrammel, a nurse practitioner, to our staff. Drop by today at Dublin Macon Cardiology. 206A Hospital Drive in Dublin. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with the Met Stores, having a great time with them <laughs> on the couch, uh, sharing about the old days, of course, Dad, with you and yes. I, how things are so much different now. I'm you know, you. we want to kind of segue and talk about what's, uh, you know, the important family time that you have together. Mm -hmm. uh, Dad, what's, what special times do you share with the kids and try to make sure that even with your busy, busy schedule with your work and, mm -hmm. you know, being a husband, that you're spending that special time with the kids? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think early on, um, again, given how you and I grew up, mm -hmm. career was such a big driver right. on what, you know, what we were expected to do. Um, and, it, and it is a hard balance uh, to maintain. And early on, I was on, I was on the road a lot because I worked for the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, so I was constantly ping-ponging across the state. And, and I remember at one point I came home and my wife mentioned to me, she said, you know, Lauren said the saddest thing. She said, when does daddy come home? Because she'd missed me. And I mean, she was, she was quite young at the time, but she just at that young age, she was noticing, where's my dad? And so I think we did, that was kind of a switch that was thrown early on mm -hmm. for me that you, know, you do need to spend that quality time. And as Lauren mentioned, we spent a lot of time on ball fields. Um, yeah. Dylan plays baseball, so we spent a lot of time playing baseball, a lot mm -hmm. of time playing softball, right. soccer. Lauren also played tennis as well. Mm -hmm. um, and if soccer and tennis hadn't overlapped, she would have played both of those in high right. school. Um, but we did make it a point. We always made it a point. Uh, and again, my background as a family, um, we always ate meals together. And I can remember, I don't know what year it was, Lauren said she was in, in school, in high school, 
And whatever the discussion was, somehow it came back around to, well, how many of you eat, sit down and eat a meal with mm -hmm. your family? And Lauren was the only one that raised her hand. Yeah. She said, no. And everybody else was like, you eat with your family? And she's like, yeah, we have supper every night. And we sit around the table and, you know, we talk about whatever. And it was just such a foreign concept. <laughs> right. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> and she, she said, she said, daddy, I almost felt a little ostracized. Like I was doing something wrong. Yeah. I said, no, that's, you know, it's just the, the way of the culture. Right. As we alluded to earlier, is like we've all got these distractions yeah. and these things that keep us so busy. Mm -hmm. and, and you really do. You have to fight and grab and say, no. This is family. Yeah, this is this this is the cornerstone of who yeah. we are. So plant your flag there, yeah. and, and you know it's good to be diverse. It's good to be multi-talented, mm -hmm. multifaceted, right. and so forth. But but always know where home is. That's right. Always know where home is. And I think again that was that was easy. That was an easy lesson for me because I did have such a large family, mm -hmm. and my parents my parents did put such a great emphasis on that. Um, you know if it you know and sometimes if it meant that the the family couldn't go do it, we just didn't do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and we just know family is more important than that. And that's good that you got that basis because right. that's very important because when they uh, grow up and leave, mm -hmm. like the oldest daughter, mm -hmm. and of course now you're about to go to college, I mean, those dynamics change, so and you have to really cherish those times. Right. And uh, so, Lauren, can you think of a time of something you all have done as a family, vacation time, <laughs> something that's been really special to you that you remember? Um, I know it's been a while because as we got into high school and got busy, I'm like mm -hmm. never home now. <laughs> but uh, we used to, back when Shayna was still at home and all of us were still together, we would have like family game night or family mm -hmm. movie night. Yeah. We'd all like <laughs> crowd up on the couch together and um, or we'd like play poker and because mm -hmm. dad's always told us, us girls, when we go off to college, we need to learn how to play poker. <laughs> so <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, no, I told her. I'm just joking. I said, I said, you're, I said, you both of your girls are really pretty. I said, if you learn how to play poker, I said, these dumb college boys, they'll just give you their money because they're playing poker with such a pretty girl. I'm telling so you. I said, so I taught her how to play poker. I said, you won't have to work a job or anything. Yeah, you can eight balls. You right, right, right. Pool champion. Exactly. Right. Uh, Dylan, talk to us about what's uh, a special time that you recall with your family that you would. Um, well, we. Like every Friday night, we would. Now we go out to Dino's every Friday night. We have a family dinner. Right. Yeah. But she works most of the time, and she's she's <laughs> not with us. And now Shana's not here, so she can't go with us. So it's usually just me, mom, and dad. Right. But right. last last Friday, she had the opportunity to eat with us because she wasn't working. Right. So she got really excited about that. But, but, I was there. But but don't don't think he doesn't take great pleasure when we oh, do get to go and Lauren's working. When she's serving, he, he, he snaps. Bread, please. Yeah. Bread. <laughs> Pick it up. I need more water. Right, right. <laughs> that is beck and call. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, all these times are so special. Mm -hmm. And as your family transitions, you know, Tim, from when they were little, mm -hmm. uh, you had a certain way of doing things. Oh, yeah. And as they transition out of the house, mm -hmm. things are the dynamics are definitely changing. And then, Dylan, it's going to be just you with your parents. And so things are going to take a shift as well and and you know those are things that as parents that's what we raise our children to do right to be able to grow up and then move out and be mm -hmm. able to be successful in whatever field uh that you're in and so i think that as a parent that makes you feel good mm -hmm. inside right and so um things are about to change yeah. mm -hmm. how do you feel uh dad about the fact that you got your baby girl now getting ready to go off to college i know it's it's it, it this this year has been a world because she's been so busy with activities, civic yeah. civic activities, sports related, school related. Um, so it has been kind of one of those where Margie and I have really had to kind of, all right, yeah. slow it down. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you can't stop time. It, it keeps right. coming at you. So again, we just, we try to be as much a part of the process as we can. Um, I remember coming home uh, one night not too long ago and uh, Lauren and Margie were sitting on the sofa pouring over uh, um, college stuff online, you know, yeah. getting registered and oh, for it. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want any part of that. I'm glad y'all are handling it. Good, good for you. But I mean, it's, you know, again, it's just, it's a, it's a sign of the times. But at the same time, you know, I go back to, well, what, what was my goal as a parent? Right. That was to raise children mm -hmm. that can stand on their own two That's feet. Right. You know, the scriptures, um, obviously very important, very special in my mm -hmm. life. So you train the child up right. in the ways of the Lord. And, and it is, I think people people do tend to lose sight of that word. That's the operative word. Mm -hmm. You have to train the child up. To. And again, along with, along with love, you soak it in a lot of love, but also as accountability mm -hmm. and discipline. I tell them all the time, you can do anything in the world that you want to do, yeah. but you better own it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when I say own it, I mean make it all yours. Have fun with it. Throw yourself into it. You know, whatever it is. Um, you know, whatever her major wants to be. If she yeah. changes her mind, fine. But own it. Own it. Whatever it is. You know, Dylan right now, all he wants to do is play baseball. Okay, fine. If that's what you want to do, but yeah. you better own it. So there is a part of that process where you do have to, you have to keep them in between the lines a little. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I, I know how I was as a youth, and I didn't want anybody to tell me to do anything. Yeah. You know, I just I figured I was young and bulletproof, and I could do it all myself. And so I kind of used that that shortcoming of my own to say, all right, well, if I knew I reacted that way as a child, yeah. how, how do I want to reach my kids to let them know that, mm -hmm. that that you know you do have to put in the work. You do. You I, have to put in the work. And our experiences, I think, help us as parents because right. I think that we really try to shield our kids from certain things because we know if we've gone through it, we right. know what the end result Absolutely. is going to be. Right. And, you know, Lauren, you're about to go to college. <laughs> I remember my college days. If I could go back to college and not do the work, but just go to college. Yeah, just hang out. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I would love it. And so, Lauren, uh, with you transitioning, um, how are you going to stay connected to your family? Because your roots, your foundation, oh, yeah. how are you going to stay connected? Well, I, one of the reasons that I chose, I'm going to Georgia Southern. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that I chose Georgia Southern was because it is kind of, it's not here in Dublin. It's not middle Georgia. I'm not yeah. right down the street, right. but I'm still close enough to where I can come home if I need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think my, even my sister, when she went off to college, she was five hours away, but right. she still mm -hmm. it was she like, she talked to us regularly. And I remember calling her and I was just like, hey, just wanted to check in. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, how's it going? And she's uh, like, Lauren, I'm out with some friends right now. Can yeah, I, I, I talk to you later? Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. It's, it's different. Right. So you're in a place to where, you know, it's, it's far enough away, but close enough for a drive, right. but too far for a drive by. Yes. That's right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so this is giving you that responsibility that you're going to need to go to that next level, but also giving you still some security to know that you can come home mm -hmm. from, you know, things that you may need. Right. Family Absolutely. time, laundry, food, <laughs> food. Yes, food, yeah, food. You know, <laughs> groceries to put in your room. Never, yes. never I've had to heard Statesboro it. doesn't have a Kroger, and I'm kind of <laughs> like, oh I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but you know, the thing about college life, though, whatever city you're in, there's a way that you'll be able to adjust. Right. You're going to have, you're going to just have you'll, your own yeah, set. You'll assimilate. Yeah. yeah, the way you grocery shop, you're like, okay, let me go here. <laughs> oh, I usually buy this, but I'm going to have to come down a little right. bit. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, that's generic. Right. You're going to be just fine. And now for you, Dylan, you've been used to having your big sister around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's been kind of nice for you. And so I know that you, as being the youngest child, you're going to have to transition as well from that detach, you know, have to detach <laughs> a little bit. How do you feel about that? I don't want her to go. Don't you don't, to go. Did you just say you don't want her to go? No. <laughs> Who's going to help me with my homework? You're right. right. There you go. There's the real answer. I right. edit all his papers. Yeah. Edit all his papers. Oh, well, I mean, after a long day of work, he's not going to want me knocking on his door at <laughs> 9 o'clock and wanna, hey, can you edit this paper? Because I'm sure there's a lot of spelling errors. And yeah, go hand it to uh, your you sister. FaceTime, yeah, FaceTime Lauren. Yeah. Yeah. That, that email right. is so fast. <laughs> we're going to take a break, guys. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, right. and we're going to close out with the mess tours. Thanks, guys. Celebrate the 4th of July at Freedom Fireworks, Black Cats, World Class, Bigs, Brothers, Flashies, Wild Dragon, Enigma, Legends, we've got the good stuff. Freedom Fireworks has something for everyone. Friendly service and top brands with our no-dud guarantee. We take pride in offering military discounts and we guarantee the lowest prices. Buy one, get one free now as we celebrate our independence. Freedom Fireworks, 2242 Highway 441 South in Dublin and 712 Central Drive in East Dublin. Check our website or like us on Facebook for more information. Happy birthday to all Americans from Freedom Fireworks. We've got the boom. We are back and this has been such fun here on the couch here. Um, listening to you guys and just kind of hear from each one of you about the steps um, that you're taking mm -hmm. for family to ensure that family is still intact. And so uh, we're gonna have you guys close out. We wanna talk about um, a message that you wanna give to, for the, for the kids, for you guys to give, for you Dylan, to the ones that are at home, you know, mm -hmm. because you're gonna have a, uh, your own set of, of challenges being the only one at home with the parents, so a yeah. lot's gonna <laughs> fall on you, you know, that you're not used to. And for you, Lauren, the big adventure that you're about to go on, college. 
you know, we want you to give a message to those college students that are going off for the first time and to uh, give them a message about family and how to still stay connected to their family. You know, because that's important. And you, PK, <laughs> preacher's kid. Preacher's kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heard that a few times. Um, for you, <laughs> your upbringing is something uh, pretty unique. Mm -hmm. You know, you've grown up from a family that's been solidified by the sanctity of marriage mm -hmm. and uh, family and relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And that has spilled over into your way of thinking and the way that you Obviously. live and the way that you raise your family. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be able to close out and give us a message to those dads out there. Yeah. To encourage them. Right. Because being a father is not always easy. Right. Right. Exactly. It's the easiest, hardest job right. you'll ever have. It, it is. And, 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 <laughs> and like, so, yeah. yeah, so you think about it. Mm -hmm. We're going to let Dylan go first. <laughs> Dylan, are you ready for this? I guess I'll have to be. All right. Talk <laughs> to us, Dylan. Well, with someone going off to college, you just have to maintain what you're doing and try to just keep going because... You have to, so mm -hmm. just whatever you, whatever you, whatever you're doing, just keep going and just be there for the person that's going to college. Right. So if they have problems like college, they just need to vent and just okay, I'm here, talk. Right. I'm, I'll listen. Oh, I'll give you my consent. <laughs> Lord, he's gonna be your listening ear. Yes, so proud. He just, right. he just wants all the juicy gossip. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. He wants to hear about all the all the pretty right. girls. Right, right. <laughs> and Lauren, for you. Um, because a lot of times when kids are so ready to go to college, they're not always used to the freedom. Mm -hmm. And with freedom comes responsibility. It does. It You're does. gonna have to be able to handle that freedom. <laughs> Don't act like me and your daddy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are so terrible. When we first yeah. got that freedom. But no, but it's, it's true. Right. You're gonna have to really mature even more so than you already are. Mm -hmm. And so talk to the uh, up and coming college students? <laughs> well, I think one of the most important things that I've come to realize is um, there's, there's a difference. You have to be able to understand when you're getting tough love. And it's, you know, it's not always pleasant, obviously. It's not what you're, you're going to want to hear, but when you're going off and you're talking to your parents about what you're doing and they're trying to help you, you know, go down the right path and make the best decisions and not necessarily make them for you, but push you to make the better of your choices, that it's important to realize that they are just looking out for, you know, your best interest. That's so. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's true because, you know, Hannah's getting ready to leave. And, you know, and it's like as a parent, that's, yeah. that's the truth. Right. That we look out for your best interest, interest and we know that we have to take our hands off. <laughs> Yeah. Although we still want to lay hands right. exactly. <laughs> on you. But, you know, mm -hmm. we have to trust that you all are doing what you're supposed to do. And so that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Right. All right, Dad. And I think that's a perfect springboard because, again, it, it is when, you know, when Hannah leaves, that is a little piece of you leaving with her. You know, and, and when Lauren leaves, that is a little piece of me leaving. And, and you know, when Shana, my oldest, left. So you have to trust that your, <laughs> your process, the process that, that, that brought you along in the culmination of this one and this one and the yeah. other one and Hannah, that, that you trust what you did and, and you stand on that. Yeah. Um, and, and like you said, a lot of times it's kind of it's kind of the double-edged sword. You know, you're the man, you're the husband, you're the right. father, you're the leader of the household. Um, so you have to be your own worst critic, but at the same time you have to put on this face of masculinity right. and I've got right. this and the dam's not cracking, we're good, we're solid, the foundation and so forth. And you know, sometimes it's hard. You have to kind of get off in your own little space and right. your own little time and say, all right, look, I've got this. Yeah. I'm gonna trust the process. I'm gonna trust my upbringing and so forth. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's gonna be exhilarating to see Lauren's dreams come to fruition and to see her go attack her life. Yeah. But that's the point. She's leaving because that's what I trained her to do. That's right. I trained her to go and stand on her own two feet to make her path in the world. And so I'm gonna trust that everything that I poured into Lauren and mm -hmm. Dylan subsequently, as well as Shana, is, is, is gonna be on display, but it's gonna be on display the way she wants it to, the way he wants it to. Because right. I, didn't, I didn't raise clones. Right. I raised kids that I hope will go out through their own cognition, through their own faith, yeah. through their own style and flair to make a difference in the world. That's right. And whatever their little corner of the world ends up being, they're gonna put their stamp on it and it's gonna be because of the way I raised them. That's right. Uh, and that's, that's really the only faith um, 
that I have in it. And, and the payoff is to get to watch that. That's right. You know, and that's so I, I'm looking forward to tuning into that. You know, as, almost as much as I look forward to tuning into you, I'm going to look forward to tuning into that. <laughs> that's right. Because that's, I mean, that's that's something commercial money can't buy. That's right. You know, that's um, right. So that that's going to be the joy in, in in my next phase as she moves on and he that's moves right. on. And you know, and it, and uh, you know, that's something that we as all parents look forward to. Right. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing. It's a joy uh, being here. With us. It's been so awesome. <laughs> Dylan, this is the most you and I have talked in a lifetime. <laughs> but we're still going to stick with our sub. Sub. Nice man bun. Right. Thanks. We're still there. <laughs> Lauren, love you, baby girl. Love you, too. <laughs> keep in touch. We're proud of you. Tim, you and Martin, you've done a wonderful job. With the I appreciate kids. that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been here with the Metsorps. It's been wonderful to get them on this couch to share about their families. Uh, you're a great dad. Keep doing what you're doing. Do we owe you a fee for the couch service? No, or no, no fee for this couch no, no service. No, for the therapy session. But the good thing is at the end of the day, uh -huh. you'll hear well done. That's it. Our good and faithful service. I appreciate that. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there from TV 35. That's all the time we have today on Real Talk. And please, keep watching.